just want to say that I very much appreciate all the things that have been said today by all the brothers and sisters. We've had an, an excellent gathering. The Lord has indeed blessed us. <clears throat> And we want that to continue, especially when we gather together at the Lord's table. This is a table of feasting. <clears throat> we know that the Lord gathers us here. This is, this is not something of our own doing that we, we have decided about this table and asked God to come and join us. That is not at all the case. This is something that he established <clears throat> in a time that we feast upon his son. <clears throat> showing his death, remembering what he has done. <clears throat> One of the things that uh, we consider when we come to the Lord's table is, is what, are, what are we going to think about? What are we going to talk about? It's, uh, sometimes it's actually difficult to decide because it, the, what the Lord has done in the gospel is a very wonderful jewel with many facets, and you'd, there's so many things to see, so many things to talk about. Sometimes it's difficult to to pick one thing and just you just have to focus on this one thing but all the time while you're you're focused on this all you there's all these other things that come to your mind too but you you have to narrow it down to to one thing <clears throat> for the for the meditation to give us something to think about <clears throat> because there's height and depth and length and breadth to Jesus even the scriptures say just his love just that passes all understanding <clears throat> And uh, the thing that I wanted to consider this evening, actually the Lord uh, again arranged this, that I had, I had decided this already earlier, uh, was the same text that Brother Aaron spoke about this morning at the table, actually uh, Peter's quoting of it, Peter's quoting from Isaiah chapter 28, <clears throat> in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 4, to whom coming, that is, we're coming unto Jesus, as unto a living stone, disal disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Now, Jesus is precious to God. <clears throat> God chose him for a reason. This was not an arbitrary choice. <clears throat> In fact, Jesus was the only possible candidate for the work that God had purposed to do. There is no other person and there is no other way. That makes Jesus exceeding precious. And if Jesus is precious to God, then he had better be precious to us too. And when you, when you see him for who he really is, he will be precious to you too. <clears throat> Peter goes on to say that as we come to God's precious lamb, in verse 5, ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Amen. And verse 7, Unto you therefore which believe, he is precious. That's three times Peter used this word precious in the short passage. <clears throat> Jesus is the cornerstone for everything that God is doing. <clears throat> he is, he's the thing that sets everything in the right direction. It gives it structure and righteousness and causes it to be built up, gives it a solid foundation, the, the most perfect and righteous beginning. Jesus is the insurance that everything is going to be finished properly and righteously. He's the cornerstone <clears throat> that God has chosen and put in place. <clears throat> Whatever men have for God, whatever men give to God, whatever men are being made to be for God, it is all being done because of God's precious cornerstone. He is precious to God and he is precious to all those who believe in him. <clears throat> and he is precious, just some things that I thought of, he is precious first because of just who he is. And he's precious because what he had done even before he humbled himself to come to earth, and because all the fullness of the Godhead dwells in him bodily. He's precious for revealing the Father, for bringing grace and truth. He's precious for the things that he said. He's precious for the things that he did for untold number numbers of the sick and the lame and those possessed of devils. 
He's precious for humbling himself and learning obedience by the things that he suffered and obeying the Father's commandments. He's precious for God's own audible testimony of him while he was here on this earth. He's precious for the glory that shone in him in the transfiguration. And for submitting himself to the death of the cross, Jesus is precious. And for bearing the sins of the whole world in his body. And for being made the sacrifice for sin. For dying at the hands of wicked men, Jesus is precious. For descending down to the grave, for preaching to the souls that were in prison, for destroying the devil and spoiling principalities and powers, for having the keys of death and hell, for being raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, Jesus is precious. For showing himself alive to his disciples for 40 days for ascending up into heaven in their sight and blessing them on the way up. Jesus is precious. For his great love wherewith he has loved us, and because of the love of the Father for him, Jesus is precious. Because of his glorious and triumphant entrance into heaven, for his bringing of his own blood into the most holy place, for his acceptance, glorification, and exaltation of God, Jesus is precious. For his taking the scroll and taking his right seat at the hand at the right hand of the majesty on high. For his kingship, lordship, and reign and rule over all things in heaven and earth. Jesus is precious. For his saving of sinners, Jesus is precious. For being the great shepherd of the sheep and the great high priest. For ruling over his enemies and ours with a rod of iron. For the wonderful promise of his coming from heaven to earth again, and that the elements will melt with the fervent heat, and all things temporal will be shaken, the present heavens and earth passing away when he appears. And because God will judge the world by that man whom he has chosen, Jesus Christ, he is precious. Because the sheep will be on his right and the goats on his left, Jesus is precious. And because he will present us as his own children to the Father and as the temple of God. And because we will be presented to him of God as his bride. And because he's the builder of the temple and the sanctifier of the bride. And because we will sit with him in his throne and inherit all things being co-heirs together with him. Jesus is precious. Now it's not that he is precious because he is rare or scarce like a precious metal or like precious jewels they're scarce but you can still get them if you got the money jesus is the only one these things here which you know is just a partial list he's the only one that could do these things no other man nor any angel ever did any one of these things or ever could jesus is precious <clears throat> If you're looking for a feast, now you can live off of this man. There's no other man like Jesus. To eat his flesh and drink his blood is life eternal. We have his mind. We are being conformed to his image. We have the promise that when he appears, we shall be like him. The wonder of the gospel is not that mankind is so precious, but that Jesus is precious. The sacrifice for our sins was precious. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversa conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Yeah. If the things declared in the gospel sound good to us and we want them, then Jesus will be precious to us also. Yeah. And if Jesus is precious to us, then God will grant us his blessing at this table. Then we will partake of the bread and the cup worthily and joyfully and in peace and fellowship with God and with Jesus Christ. Worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Amen. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for our great Savior. We thank you for the precious Lamb. And he is indeed precious to us, Father. And we thank you for him. And we confess his name, that we believe on him. And that we look forward to his coming, Father. We pray that you would grant us grace 
to remember him with joy and to feast with you and him at this table this evening as we partake of the bread and the cup we pray that you would bless our thoughts and our meditations upon him we pray these things in his name amen <laughs>